Yeah, so uh, basically what we did was just set up, and anybody can do this with Go High Level. Um, and this is Flywheel Funnel, like, you know, like another version of white label version of Go High Level. Um, basically just going through and being able to upload a bunch of data. So I went and got a bunch of data and I was targeting roofers specifically. So just uploading all those into like, you know, the database and you could just do a bulk action to just, you know, upload all the contacts. Uh, I would use like D7 or something like that. It really doesn't matter just as long as you're getting, you know, your ideal prospects, uh, data, name, email, phone numbers, really just name and phone number. Like I would take the whole spreadsheet and just narrow it down to just name and phone number. Um, and then go ahead and just select this here, select all 36,000 records. So you can see that, you know, um, I have 36,000 people in here and then set up the automations. Now, the biggest problem that we saw when I started to do this was we we're getting so many responses. It was overwhelming. And so we had to start to build out an appointment setting team. And I'll kind of get into that too, how to build and scale the appointment setting team. Also like the actual framework that I was using to close the clients. So real quick, I'm going to go over that. I'm going to hop into this, then go over this evidence exercise and then go into the actual framework that I use to be able to close the clients. So for this first part, um, and there's really like a couple different uh, parts to this, but I would send out, you know, type out a message specifically calling out, you know, my particular market. So I knew that the big problem in my market, most agency owners, it's the same thing. People are, don't want to pay any money up front, out of pocket, right? Um, especially now it's really evolved, right? It, before it was a lot easier to get, you know, a client and have them pay you cash up front. So because that's a big thing that I know that most of the market doesn't want to hear is that we, they, they got to pay a retainer or pay a management fee. Then what we did was just called out, called that out and said something in um, the message that, you know, kind of like eliminated that objection. Uh, and this is the exact thing that I use to be able to sign up 24 clients within a month with no paid traffic, just blasting out text messages, just like this. So I'd send out the, anim uh, the automations and start from about 10 a.m. until let's say probably like 3 p.m. Right, so you just send it out in drip mode. And I'd send like 150, let's say like 200, repeat it after every 15 minutes, right? From 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., you know, start on whenever, tomorrow at 10.15, something like that. And then, yeah, meeting machine, that was the name of the offer. And I would put something in here like we are looking for you know, XYZ partners, whatever, uh, or XYZ contractors, or, you know, whatever it is that you are targeting, loan officers, realtors, we're looking for people to partner with and send appointments to, something like that. Then put, address the concern that most people have and say, our partners, only pay after they meet with the prospect, right? So I know that they don't want to, they don't want to pay any kind of upfront fee. So I'd address that there and then ask an engaging question. What area are you located? What areas do you service? It's a strong hook. Yeah, something like that. It's just an uh -huh. easy answer question just mm -hmm. to get them to engage and get the back and forth going. Now, if you're sending out these things and you're blasting it to, you know, sending 200 text messages every 15 minutes from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., you're going to get a lot of messages. So in the beginning, like we started with just like doing it for like a couple hours and I would get enough to be like if you're a, like a solo uh, entrepreneur or you're somebody that's like, 
you know, you're in your agency yourself, I'd start out with just like a couple hours and maybe even space it out where you're sending it out like every 30 minutes, especially if you're sending out a couple hundred. But the point is you're getting a ton of eyeballs on the offers, on your offer and getting some engagement. As we started to really scale this, it was, we were getting so many, so many responses that I needed help. So I got a setter. We trained that setter in order to not only set the appointments, but to start to engage with the people and go back and forth and text message, you know, and then convert those into conversations that he actually had on the phone and then set the appointment. Then it got to the point where it was too much for him to handle. And so we started to hire people to just respond to the messages. So just texters that were just messaging to set up a qualifying call, we'd call it, with the appointment setter. Appointment setter goes over the qualifying call, sets the appointment, and then boom. I, I mean, if you're doing this and actually doing it the right way and just sending out um, some kind of message like this that's going to get, you know that you're, you're calling something out that you know, like specifically for my market, it was people that were just burnt out with paying these management fees, these upfront payments, right? So putting in there saying that we only pay, they only pay after they meet with the prospect or after they meet with the homeowner or after they meet with the person, whatever it is that your target market, you know, specifically who you're calling out. That was super attractive, right? That's something that somebody's going to respond to, then start to get some back and forth conversation and then set the appointment. And then I was getting like, anywhere between eight to 12 of these a day uh, appointments. And if you're getting eight to 12 appointments a day from outbound, from kind of almost like just blasting out these messages, you're going to get a lot of no-shows. So let's say like you get like 10 appointments, five of them don't show up. Then you're going to get like half of them that you're not going to want to make an offer to because they're just not the person that you want to work with. Then you get like a couple offers a day that you're making. If you're making a couple mm -hmm. offers a day, like three to four offers a day, doing that five days a week, you're going to end up getting a client a day. If you're really working it and have like, you know, obviously inside of the go high level account, you're working your pipeline, you're managing, you know, and making sure that you're following up with everybody. And you also have some kind of strong money back guarantee saying that, you know, if you don't, you know, uh, this is a very uh, more popular thing nowadays. Stipulations in the contract addressing and letting them know, hey, look, if you don't show up to all the calls, the coaching calls that we have, if you don't, um, you know, dial in and manage your CRM, if you don't make a report on every single lead and what happened with that lead, then, you know, we're not going to be able to refund you the money. And we only do it on the upfront payment, which is the offer is kind of like a separate thing. I didn't, I didn't put in here, but it was more like just an upfront payment to get everything rolling and get everything started after that pay per appointment. And then it was a three month minimum. If they stayed for three months, then they would, and they were getting a minimum of 10 appointments for 250 a pop. That's 2,500 a month for three months in a row. That's $7,500. Even if I sent the, um, the initial startup payment for 2K back, I would still profit, right? So it's just like the way that you want to structure it is something like that, something that where it's like it's low risk to them. Like the upfront payment is like nothing because they're going to get it back. And I had a strong contract that set in there all this stuff, sent it out to them. And I was doing a lot of like two, three call closes just building rapport and just working it, but you work the system and get this many messages out every day. And then you're following up like that. And you have something strong in the contract like that money back guarantee. You have a strong offer. Then there's no way that you're not going to be able to get a client a day. If you're sending, it's just, then it comes down to how do we send out more messages? And then eventually how do you get more setters and more texters? We call them qualifiers mm -hmm. and setters. The setters are setting the appointments for the qualifiers, the qualifiers are setting the appointments for the closer. So I just said a lot there. Is there any, any questions so yeah, far? Let me, let me hop into the um, questions. It doesn't look like there's anything here. I just want to bring up a from a technical standpoint um, for new brand new accounts, they typically don't want to start at 200 a pop. 
of texts because you kind of want to warm it up and step True. it up at that point. Yeah. Like you don't yes. want to just blast out 10,000 at once because Twilio will bust you up for that. Um, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So <clears throat> I would, and that's where it's like, especially if you're starting off by yourself, I would just even start off with just like a hundred. Just trickle uh, it and then start and, stepping it up as you determine your bandwidth. Right. Yeah. Yeah, just do like 100 an hour even. And I know there's different schools of thought on this, but I would recommend scrubbing your list against the DNC um, yeah. and then validating the phone numbers before you start sending this out. And then there's a TCPA litigator list too. You can, because there's people that all they do is wait for someone to text them and then they try right. to like extort them for money saying, we're going to report you if you don't pay up, you know? Yeah, that's so, another important thing. I had somebody else doing that for me, just yeah. verifying and qualifying so, everybody. So another yeah. thing, you know. So clean your list before you start doing this. <laughs> yeah. But I was somebody that like, I couldn't even get a client for like the first however many months I had an agency. Back in like 2018, I drove around the city of Philadelphia uh, dropping off social media audits, something Ty mm -hmm. Lopez was teaching at the time. And um I would just even like die to even get an appointment versus having now a calendar filled with appointments just on automatic from sending these out. And the, another thing to note, this is a way to do it with go high level. I'd also do it with organic and I have a whole mm -hmm. organic messaging framework that I use as well um, that anybody can totally use. Um, to be able to get it with organic it's just it's not as as like spammy like you're not mm -hmm. just blasting a message out it's more like you know little short messages the one thing i would say about that is if you go to linkedin it's just like everybody writing novels yeah so just say the yeah. those sweet huh. you know short little messages to just get right. in and just get the engagement in the back and forth that's really like mm -hmm. the whole idea is just get the conversation started So that's cool, man. I think one of the most compelling things that, you know, people are interested in is like how you do this without spending any ad spend. Mm -hmm. And so you're just sending text messages out um, in, in mass and getting responses to those. So I think that's a really cool model. Uh, very low overhead if you're just starting out your agency or even if you're pretty advanced, like just integrating this component into your marketing channels uh, will uh, you know boost up your business pretty quickly. 100%. Yeah, the Twilio fees do start to add up, full disclosure. Um, I started out and I would start out doing it or like completely organic. So like sending messages on LinkedIn and, and Facebook mm -hmm. uh, DMs, which just going and scraping like a Facebook group, sending messages and then sending them into your Facebook group, right. having your group be built up with testimonials, doing interviews with people, right? Mm -hmm um and different like you know entertainment and engagement yeah. inside of the group and then celebrating wins and stuff like that creating right. a little community inside of your niche the real the other thing that you could do um that i did starting out was start to do interviews inside of your group or podcasts i literally built out a sales team at one point when i had the agency with bobby where it was literally like four sales guys and myself just doing interviews with different people in our niche and in our industry in the group. Hmm. And then from there, um, we would pitch them right after the podcast because they just went and just vented about themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's the way to get started. If you don't want to spend any money at all. Um, and then once you start to get some clients, then you can start doing this and just set up the automations. Yeah, GHL is a superpower, man. Yeah, man, it really is. Um, as far as mindset, like the, the biggest thing that I see with salespeople is like, I, and I call this the evidence exercise. And it's because automatically everybody's brain is gathering up evidence for one thing or another. And when you're starting to trying to get clients, 
things start to happen and then you start to gather up evidence as to why you can't get clients. People don't have the money. It's not the right time. Um, the, the marketing's off, the messaging's off. There's all these things. So I'll literally, and this is something that I've done over the years that I just recently actually kind of thought about, like, this is something that I do that I should, you know, share with people where, and there's, there's like deep psychology behind this too, that I could go into, but it's basically like, I can sign up XYZ clients per month. You set your goal for how many clients you want to get throughout the month. And then as you start to have these things come up, you have to just have a little bit of self-awareness to be able to like notice what's going on. You know, I can sign up 10 clients this month, but you know, nobody has, nobody has any money. Everybody's, everyone has already been burned. Um, you know, the market is saturated and you start, you start really being honest with yourself. It's like all the stuff as you take more calls. It's also why like salespeople in the beginning, when you first start selling an offer, you take off a lot of times because there's nothing there yet. You haven't had the experience of the objections. You haven't had the experience. You're just so sold on the product and excited that you just, go and just share it with people. And then what starts to happen after time, you start to get the objections. You start to get the people that are saying, you know, they don't have the money or it's not the right time. Or once they get X, Y, Z, or once this happens, or I've been scammed so many times. And what starts to happen is you start to grab stuff from those experiences and from your past. And your past isn't in your past anymore. And it's not even in the, in the present moment. It's worse. It's in the future because now you're, you're taking your experiences and then projecting them right into your next calls. So all this stuff, as you write it down though, and get present to it, you're gaining power because then you're starting to realize this is the stuff that I'm automatically thinking and rather get, rather than automatically gathering up more evidence as to why this stuff's true. I'm going to change all this disempowering stuff to empowering stuff and flip this from, I can sign up X, Y, Z clients per month. And, you know, whatever it is, and it's easy. You know, there's loads of money or something like, Everyone I'm targeting everyone I'm targeting has money to spend on ads. They're gonna they're gonna make they will make four dollars for every one dollar they spent with me, right? Just simple, simple stuff. And, you know, the more action that you go to start to take, there's, there's something called the genesis of identity that everybody decides for things throughout their childhood or throughout growing up that there's something wrong here. I'm not good enough. I don't belong. And I'm on my own. Every human being decides that. And then that becomes your identity then your brain needs familiarity and comfortability in order to survive. So the more that you start to take this action and the more that you start to project that you're going to become something, the more your identity or your automatic self starts screaming and it'll start gathering up evidence as to why this stuff is true. And it'll bring you back down because that's its job is to survive and have you have some kind of experience that's familiar and comfortable because it's survived and made it this far, right? And you'll continue to make it being that same identity. If you want things to shift, it's shifting the identity and shifting who you're becoming, saying that you're gonna have X, Y, Z happen, and then gathering up evidence as to why that stuff's gonna happen and almost like creating this new identity 
versus this old one that's automatic, that's disempowering and will have you survive, creating something more powerful and then gathering up evidence as to why that's the truth versus all this all old automatic stuff, right? Now, that's what I would say as far as the mindset is I was always gathering up evidence as to why I'm going to be able to sign up 24 clients within a month. And every little thing, no matter what, it, it's like a lot of stuff I'm talking about, human beings are meaning making machines, always making up something regardless. When something happens, just making it up. So it's either going to be an empowering interpretation or disempowering interpretation. You might as well create something empowering, Right. So regardless of what would happen, I would twist it into being something empowering. And it was a reason why I was going to be able to hit 24 clients in a month. It was really, the goal was 20 clients in a month. And then the last day of the month, I signed up six clients in one day because I created some urgency with like an end of the month uh, uh, special, which you could totally do that too. Um, the other thing is I followed this framework with anything that I've ever sold. You need the questions. You need to ask the right questions to be able to pull out the emotion and drive somebody towards and lead them into, you know, what's going to be best for them based off of if they don't do anything about this. Most people, the real, the real driver is the fear of what happens if they don't figure this out. Right. So you really want to bring that up and the, to bring that up in an effective way, you can't just go right into that. We need to build, build up, you know, take them down. First of all, connect with them and just, you know, like a normal human being, be your authentic self. Ask them the circumstance questions, really getting into what's actually going on, the breakdown questions into like the problems, then the impact of those problems and bringing them way down right? Then we bring them up into the breakthrough questions. And what would that actually be like for them? So bringing them down, bringing them way up, and then boom, ripping all that away from them with the cost questions. What's it going to cost them not to be able to have this available? And when you can bring them through that sequence where you bring them way down, where they're feeling that pain, you bring them way up into feeling this new future and what it would be like and the emotions around you know, basically the negative emotions and then the positive emotions, ripping away the positive emotions. Then you can transition into your presentation and have them register powerfully because they're present to what happens if they don't do anything about this. And that's really, I think your job is to take somebody through a process where, you know, they're, they're going way down into what happens, what they're dealing with and the pain behind that and how long they've been feeling that for. And then into the new future of what it would be like and then ripping it away from them is really your job, you know, because you're having them get present to what they really want. And then at that point, you're not really a salesperson. You're more like, like almost like an advisor taking them through and just explain like having them see and holding a mirror to their face of what's going on with their current situation and what happens you know if they continue to keep doing it what do they really want and really looking at themselves in the mirror to say like okay i need to be able to do this and then your solution is the gap to be able or the thing in between the gap to be able to close that gap and make it so they can actually have whatever it is that they want right so you need some kind of process like this to be able to take them through, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. And something that you glanced over earlier, which I think is super important, it, it sounds kind of frou-frou, but that's, it's kind of like where the money is. Um, but really setting the table for your call, both internally and externally, you know, um, and just acknowledging those, uh, you know, disempowering beliefs that we have typically going into a sales call because there's this book I read called The Power of Now. And mm. it's like the act of observing the negative thought eliminates the negative thought. Like it, you, you clear the space. If you just simply acknowledge that that is what you're feeling at that time, it goes away. Like it, it's really interesting uh, psychology behind it. But I've used 100%. that quite a bit. Um, 100% man, totally agree with you. Yeah, it's like seeing that. That's, and that's what I'm talking about with the evidence exercise. It's like acknowledging the negative, like you're talking about, 
when you write it down and get it in front of you and write it down, like, uh, cause we're all automatically neg negatively generating things, putting it down on paper and seeing it is really where you get your power from. Cause you could see the automatic machinery just make just going it's just going to go and so when you can see that it, what it's doing then you really have the power like you're talking about you can acknowledge that then you can create something different and start to gather up evidence for that thing to happen right so yeah it's great stuff i'm just going to check for questions real quick um on the live tim miller is interested in your contract <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah, don't I mean, it, it's pretty simple, man. I would just have something just put together saying that. Um, let's see if I could find it and just post it uh, in their forum, like a link to it. But the contract is basically just letting them know, you know, if they don't follow these stipulations, that's the biggest thing that they're good. First of all, they, the money back guarantee is in there. Right. Mm -hmm. So the money back guarantee, though, mm -hmm. is on the upfront payment. Mm -hmm. Not on, you know, the pay per appointment or if you're doing retainer plus ad spend, it's not for the retainer plus ad spend, it's for a one time upfront yeah. fee. Right. Yeah. And there's some nuance to that, too. Like some mm -hmm. people will have hesitation of saying you only pay when you get appointments. But oh, by the way, there's a setup fee. Like some people have a hesitation behind that. Yeah. But I've, I've actually never had a client um, bulk at that because they know that you have setup costs, but you've already kind of established the interest with that hook. And you're not like, it's not like you're misleading them. It's just, hey, this is the cost of doing business and we're going to get it set up, but we'll refund it if you don't get the results you're looking for. 100%. So the, the way you set that up is very important for people to understand. Yeah, well, it's like, and it, this is like a, it's a constant juggling act back and forth between, you know, sales and marketing, where you need to have a certain amount of, you know, you need to, if you, if you're not setting appointments, you haven't sparked enough curiosity. Mm -hmm. So you need something that's going to hook them in and sell them on the appointment, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you do too much of that, you're going to burn out the sales yeah. team or burn yourself out, right? Yeah. So you need a little bit of both. I was talking about this on a call yesterday with somebody like, um, you know, you have all just like the most, you know, basic stuff to hook people in. And then you're just getting a ton of appointments. You'll, you'll yeah. burn out the sales team, but you do need some of those and it can't just be all qualified people because then you're just going to get you'll have way less appointments and mm -hmm. if you're running ads they're going to be way more expensive right mm -hmm. so to go back to what you're saying yes you need like you have that that hook to get them in and that's the thing is that like they are still attracted to that offer and mm -hmm. the way that i positioned it was like yes we do have the upfront fee and they get that we have the cost and stuff like that and you never have to pay a retainer fee again mm -hmm. like there's no more you have to you know pay like two thousand a month three thousand four thousand a month now it's only if you actually meet with the prospect and mm -hmm. i had a, a space where it was 24 hours before we would charge them. And if you're wondering like, well, how do you actually know if they actually met with the person? Well, we just automatically charge them unless they let us know otherwise. And we gave them that 24 hour gap to let us know. Yeah. So then this way, and by the way, I would only do that for like the first month or two, mm -hmm. then you switch them over to a retainer. Mm -hmm. And that's better for the client too, because they get the value of what you're doing. You actually brought them through rather than just having them like charging them the upfront payment, you know, mm -hmm. and just saying this is what it, now they really understand, you know what I mean? Right. And one of the things on the, so for sure, I know this is a, a training about sales, but you also need to be able to fulfill on all of this. So make sure that you have your fulfillment team that can actually deliver what the salespeople are selling. And then for appointments uh, to validate if they've shown up or not, 
one of the tricks that I've seen people do is send a text to the prospect uh, for the client. Say, hey, uh, are you on your way yet? Or something like that. Or are, are you ready for the call? And if they say yes, then they bill at that point. Like if they respond positively to the that outreach, because it's sort of like 90% chance that they're going to be there if they just confirm the appointment an hour before, you know? Yeah. So it increases the odds of that actually delivering. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I always do um, some kind of confirmation beforehand. We had, I would send out confirmation when we set the appointment, a reminder, text, and then also a phone call that morning from the appointment setting team. And then the appointment setting team would send me a screenshot of who confirmed and who didn't. So I knew what the day was looking like. Right. Very cool. Yeah, man. Um, so basically I have all the same scripts that I was using, all the same training, all the same frameworks that I was using, uh, here available to anybody that wants it. So there's the appointment setting training, which is like includes the organic messaging script, um, the solution where messaging script messaging training, like how to actually, you know, what I was saying in the messages to follow up once we start to get the engagement and setting the appointments, the appointment setting framework, and then nurturing a Facebook group, which we were sending all the leads to, and the transformation matrix, more like mindset stuff that I was kind of hinting on and going up over. Then the building and scaling uh, the appointment setting team and how, you know, I went about doing that, where to hire the people and all that stuff. And then also like specific questions that I would ask in the interviewing process to make sure that I'm getting a strong team in place. We have somebody on our team right now who's literally like in the hospital uh, for COVID, got out of the hot, like showed up to the call the morning that she went into the hospital, uh, oh. that she got out of the hospital. Then she w then was on the call, then went back in and then messaged me the day that she got out and was on the call again. And I'll say that I don't, I'm not like super rigorous in the sense of like, you know, you need to fucking do this or, you know, we're sorry for the language, but you need to do this or you're fired. I don't, I can't stand fear cultures like that. And I'm not like that. And because I set the bar so high and then, and from the beginning, like I let them know on the interview, there's a certain frame that I use to let them know what they're getting into, we have people like that on our team that are literally like, we'll do anything to stay with us, set the appointments. And it's just a very rigorous discipline environment. And I set the tone from the beginning with them. And then the sales training with all the questions and everything like specifically taking you through this framework that I have here. Um, with the circumstance questions, the breakdown questions, impact questions, breakthrough questions, new future questions, cost questions, the transition, presentation, registration, how to go through all that and all the questions that I use are all inside of here. And then the vault is literally everything combined together. So the sales training is separate, appointment setting and scaling team, you get this and this. Um, or you could just get the 297, which is the, and I'm going to double these prices before the end of the month. We have somebody coming on that's going to be setting appointments for this and, and doing some more of this. So but if you wanted to get it while it's still available at this price, um, then I would imagine you, you have the link, right? That we. Yeah, I went ahead and dropped it in the comments um, sure. and in the Facebook live description. So awesome. people are interested in, in signing up. Okay. Cool. The link. Um, I did see a couple more questions in the uh, group cost per appointment. Um, I guess maybe pick a niche that you were working on and then what's the approximate cost per appointment using this model? Um, do they mean like cost per appointment in, in what's it like? Like per set, you know? Um, yeah, for meaning doing the text blasting, right? Not from page. Right. Uh, well, I was spending like a couple hundred bucks a day. If you're doing like a, if it's a sent a text message and you're sending a couple hundred text messages, then it's going to be like a hundred to two hundred bucks a day. Now I was getting, I got twenty four clients at uh, twenty four clients. 
1997. So $47,928 in a month, mm -hmm. you know, right. hundred bucks a day. What's that? Three K. Yeah. So, and, and they probably don't need to start there. I mean, like we were saying earlier, they could throttle it up based on their ability, their bandwidth, their budget. Um, 100, 200 bucks a day in text. That's a, that's a boatload of text, man. <laughs> a lot of text. I mean, they that, charge like 0 0.001 cents or something per text. Right. Right. I'm saying like worst case scenario, right? Um, yeah. So you, it's, yeah. It's, you really have to build it up to get there. We were sending a lot of messages towards the end. Okay. So in the beginning, starting out, yeah, it's like like 100 bucks a day, like not even. Okay. Yeah. And then cost per appointment. I mean, we were getting literally, this is why this is so valuable because it's, yeah. if you run paid traffic, you're going to get, you're going to spend a boatload of money. To be able to get this many employments i mean right. there's no this doesn't, doesn't even compare in that sense so as long as you scrub the list you make sure you're doing everything compliant and you're not targeting anybody that's sitting there waiting to just jack you up <laughs> um, <laughs> then you can you know you're you, if we're getting like eight to twelve appointments a day and you spend a hundred bucks like you serious like people are spending yeah, i know people that spend a couple hundred bucks per appointment and then so, out of, I don't know, 10 appointments, you might make three offers and get like one or two good like clients out of it. Or right. Depends on your conversion rate and your how well you study this this type of training, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. There's a multiple factors that go in the to yeah. right. sales of individual sales ability. Yeah. That and then also like filtering and qualifying the people. You get better at it as you go because then you can find out more things like, hey, we're getting a lot of people on that are saying this, you know, let's make sure that we're not getting anybody like that. And the more messages you're sending out, the more qualified you can get with it, and the better it gets, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, so, yeah, it's like five to 10 bucks an appointment. That's super cheap, dude. Yeah, dude. You cannot do that with ad spend. You're probably looking like north of 50 to 100 bucks an appointment or more. So yeah, yeah. It's called this training: how to cut your appointment costs by ninety percent. <laughs> right? We're just like, yeah, how to go from spending two hundred dollars an appointment to five to ten. Yeah. Now, how to go from paying two to three hundred bucks per appointment to five. Twenty x your marketing dollars. You know. Yeah. How far your your marketing dollars go? Yeah. That's cool. Sure. All right. Let me see if there's any other questions. Um, I always learn something when you uh, when you do these uh, these types of trainings, and it helps me, you know, refresh things that you already talked about. So, pretty cool, man. I appreciate you coming on here and sharing a lot, yeah. lot of value here. For sure, appreciate you having me. Um, I don't see. Oh, what do you charge the client? Um, so, like maybe the setup fee. I think you said 1997. Yeah, 1997. Then 250 an appointment. 250 an appointment. And again, I would do that for like the first couple months and then switch over to retainer. Yeah. This way they get the value of it. And it does start to be a pain when everybody's like, hey, I didn't meet with this person. They keep just messaging <laughs> you about the appointments. Even if you have it to a team, they're still going to want to like, I don't know. I could have probably done a better job of setting. Really make sure that you set that up and say that like you're yeah. they're not going to be able to talk to you. You have somebody else that's handling all that, or else it is a nightmare. Operation. So that you just transition them all over into retainer. Mm -hmm. um, so to start out though, yeah, nineteen ninety seven up front, two fifty per appointment per meeting though, right? So another thing that like really helped with the sales is taking it's the it's very old concept and people are always afraid of what's on the other side of the mountain. So the more that you can, you can have them see that you've seen the other side and you've been down it and you, you know, what's going to happen, the more trust that builds. Right. So I would go into, and, and the more that I would go into this story, it, it underlined that I had been doing this a while. I knew what I was talking about. If you haven't been in it in a while, you could just use mine. When we first started doing this, 
we would just charge for leads, right? We do like a retainer fee for 2000 a month and just get you X amount of leads. And then what we saw and what we found down the other side of the mountain was that, you know, a lot of people just wanted to get appointments. And so, or you could even take it back a step further and say, at first we were just getting leads. Then we started getting exclusive leads that were just for you particularly. Then we took it a step further and then we got into people wanted appointments. So then we started calling the leads and setting the appointments for them. And then what we found was that people just wanted to pay. They don't want to pay upfront for just, you know, leads and appointments just when they actually met with the person. So then we took it from being this retainer thing to only paying per appointment. And then what we found once we started doing that was that not every appointment's worth the same, right? You could probably say that from experience, Mr. Customer. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure you've, you've experienced that not every lead is, is valued at the same amount. So we started to only charge people when they actually met and had a consultation with, you know, the particular product service that you're offering, right? And then from there, we've created our XYZ system where we only charge when you actually meet with the homeowners. So these are meetings. These are not appointments. These are not leads. These are not, you know, exclusively share leads, appointments, or any kind of management fee. This is only when you meet. And it was a very taking them through that they're like wow you know this guy's obviously been in for a while he knows what he's talking about he's seen like and has a story behind like what happened and how they got to this and it's not just something that he came up with on the fly right Mm -hmm. you know i'm really looking out for what's in the best interest for the prospect or the client and then the upfront fee combined with the terms of the contract will help encourage them to do the work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, that's one of the hardest parts is getting people to actually do work, you know. Yeah. And if a refund is on the line, then they better do the work, you know. Right. Yeah, and that's where it's like, it's just the marketing process is the same as mm-hmm. finding the good clients. Bring on a bunch of clients and then find the good ones and then you're trimming yeah. the fact that your agency. Just keep the good ones, you know. Yeah. Then as you go, you just work with the good ones. We have it to now where it's like a partnership mm-hmm. where like we part because I have a business in that industry, we partner with them. So now it's we've even t- kind of taken it a step further. But yeah, you want to see how you can do that versus just continuing to just bring everybody on and then trimming the fat. Mm-hmm. So continuing to just keep evolving. Very cool. Awesome. Well, I don't see any other questions here. Um, anything else you want to kind of add to encourage folks to just take action and implement some of what you've, you've taught here? Um, not that I could think of really. I would just say if you're somebody that's, you know, struggling to get appointments, you're struggling to get clients or have a predictable way that you know that you can, you know, send out X amount of messages and get X amount of clients, you know, mm-hmm. and you don't have like proven process, you could probably figure it out yourself, you know, just going through and doing it. Or you could just take the framework that I've used mm-hmm. and just plug it right in where you have these questions, right? You have all of the scripts as far as like the appointment setting training, you have how to build out the appointment setting team you have it right away where you could just build and scale your team and be able to just keep bringing on a client every single day right or you could figure it out yourself just might take a little bit more time if you got the time then go ahead but if you got the cash might as well just figure it out right Right. Um, so that's the only thing i would say there yeah and i guess one of the biggest takeaways is you you cannot make sales on appointments you don't have so you need to go book those appointments and this is one of the the better systems that i've seen out there for getting those appointments so appreciate it man um but yeah if I, I don't have any other questions out here um let's check one last time yeah if you guys have questions moving forward just go ahead and drop them in the comments and we'll we'll do our best to um to answer those and then i, I did drop a link to the training if you're interested in learning more from uh from patrick so Appreciate your time today, and we'll see everybody later. Take care now. Appreciate it. See you.